Hello and welcome to the Kick in the Creatives podcast, hosted by myself, Sandra Busby, and my fellow creative, Tara Roskell, offering you interviews, inspiration, motivation, and a gentle prod in the right direction. And for lots more information, challenges, and other useful tools to help you get creating, you can go to kickinthecreatives.com. And of course, this is where you can also find today's show notes. Enjoy the show. Welcome to today's episode and today we're going to chat about resistance and how to resist it. But before we get on to that, thanks so much to everyone who's been sharing their work they've been doing for the challenges with us on social media. Keep them coming. We love seeing what you're doing. And also a huge thank you to our latest Kofi supporters. Your support shows us that you like what we do and you'd like us to continue. And we're going to thank each of you personally at the end of the show. Yeah, and finally, we want to thank our sponsor, Evolve. Evolve can teach you how to paint in a realism style to a professional level in a year or less and for a fraction of the price of art school. Not only do they give you all the lessons and support online, but they also send you all the materials that you need. Now, if you want to learn more about them, well, it's actually not learning about them. You actually get a free tutorial to teach you how to paint. And you can go and see that. It's a free webinar at kitinthecreatives.com forward slash evolve webinar but if you do want to learn more about the program you can go back and listen to episodes 67 and 73 anyway sandra what is new with you well if you might remember last time we spoke um we did the episode didn't we coming out of an art block yes and i mentioned that just as i'd come out of my art block um my tennis elbow had really kicked in (laughs) Yes, and I yeah. was not able to hold a paintbrush and grip a paintbrush for more than 10 minutes without it really hurting. So um, on Friday last week, um, I finally had an injection, like a steroid injection, which I was Yikes. told was going to be very, very painful, but it, I didn't feel it. <laughs> I oh. I, did, I almost had to... Yeah, I've heard it's painful. Yeah. Well, apparently they, had, they have to kind of go in, bounce off the bone, and then go in at another route angle bounce off the bone and then go in straight well I didn't feel any of that at all I just I used a little trick I use is when I have an injection which is very rare thankfully but um I pinch an area of my body like that's really sensitive like my wrist or inside of my leg or something (laughs) you're not pinching your boob are you uh, no (laughs) (laughs) twisting my nipple or something no that would look a bit weird yeah no I just pinch somewhere else and what it does is it confuses the brain apparently Or you can just scratch like the back of your hand and your brain is sort of confused while the needle goes Do you need to do that to confuse your brain? (laughs) My brain's always confused. (laughs) But anyway, no, I I had to say to him, are you sure you did it? And he said, yes, I did it. So that was great. I was really impressed. But I thought it was going to be a kind of like quick fix. But he said it could take up to um, uh, three weeks to start working. That said, by the following day... Although my actual elbow was still hurting, I noticed a big difference um, to the pain that that goes down my forearm from the tennis elbow. So um, the tendon sort of pain is a lot less already. Um, The elbow's still quite... But I'd say it's only three or four days in, isn't it? So everything looks quite promising so far. And anyway, so... I, he said to me, I've got to rest it for 48 hours. So I didn't do anything. Um, I didn't do any painting for 48 hours. And then yesterday I thought, right, let's see then, because it's not hurting much at the moment. Let's let's see how I can grip a paintbrush. And um, yeah, I went in there and I did an hour. And not even that really, probably about 45 minutes because I did what I needed to do on it. Um, and it's, yeah, much better. So oh, good. in that session, I finished the acrylic layers of the painting. You know, I said to you, <clears throat> I'm doing a painting of a new subject, but I'm also mixing up a bit and doing it differently. So normally I always use oils from start to finish. And this time I've decided I'm going in with acrylics um, through right, really through to the kind of mid layer and then the top sort of two layers I'm going to sort of refine it with oils so that's that's new to me because you know it's normally I'd be blending from layer one this time it looks quite uh what's the word um rough I guess yeah sort of a bit bit blocky um much less 
um, refined, let's say, like that. So it, normally I, it's kind of, it would scare me to death it looking like that. But now I'm like, no, no, this is, this is fine. It's going to be fine. And what's great is what I did yesterday, if I'd done that in oils, I'd be waiting a few days before I could go back to it. Because I've used acrylic, yeah. I can go back in as soon as I like, really. So that's brilliant. So I definitely think this is the way I might be going from here on w- with the painting. Because quite... Why are you doing this? So are you doing this to speed things up? Uh, partly to speed things up and partly just because I wanted a bit of a change. May... I'll tell you what it is. So if I hadn't have been using acrylics on this painting so far, there is no way yeah. I'd have gone in and done 10 minutes of painting with my elbow. Because right, yeah. it takes longer than that to wash my brushes out, you know. With acrylic, what I love is you just wash it out with water. It's brilliant. And I'm loving that. And, it, and also just the fact that if I wanted to, as it happens, I haven't got time today, but if I wanted to go back in today and paint, I can paint o- over the top without smudging anything. So without having to use a mile stick and all the rest of it, because I can just, I can go in with my oils without feeling like I might move anything, any layers underneath. Yeah. So it's, it's gonna, there's going to be two benefits to it, really. Um, the main one being I can probably finish a painting a lot quicker than what I would normally. So, yeah, so well, that's, yeah. that's, that's good. what's new with me. I ha- and, yeah, I'm really pleased. So far, the, the painting of my donuts is going OK. So what about you? Good. What's new with you? Well, I've been testing out running ads on Facebook. Yeah, you said about that break. last time. Yeah. yeah. Um, How's it going? So I can't remember what I told you last time. Well, you said you were gonna. You you said you were gonna dabble in it, and you're just sort of trying to fathom it all out. So you hadn't got further than that last time. I don't oh think. right. So yeah, I, I've started running Facebook ads, and I'm trying out this. I don't know if I told people this last time, but I'm trying out this. This this. Um, idea that you try running a free print offer plus postage um postage and handling in order to try and basically build your mailing list and the theory is pretty much any online marketing nowadays the majority of it is done by giving giving or letting you buy something really cheap yeah which gets you on the person's list because and then they trust you you know they've seen your stuff they believe that you're going to do what you say you, you're going to do or you're going to send, you know. And so then they start getting a little bit more invested in you. And then they might be interested in your higher level items. That That's the theory with any of these online marketing type things. So the idea here is that you, someone who likes your work, but they perhaps wouldn't, because they've never met you, they don't know who the heck you are, they probably wouldn't want to buy something from you. But if you say, oh... For three pounds seventy five, which will cover like my shipping and handling, you know, and all my postage and my packaging, you can have a small print. Then basically, you wouldn't worry if someone didn't deliver on that, would you? No, no, you wouldn't. So the idea is then then they've got something in their hands, and then if they like it, I think oh God, I do actually like this. In the future, they might then think about buying another print or they might eventually buy an original so that is the theory anyway but But also i think when you when you get when you do that they get to see the real thing as in you know sometimes um i've heard before when people have bought art online and they've been incredibly disappointed when they get it because clearly the person has enhance the photo of the artwork on online and it doesn't look as vibrant as it did online blah 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 so it's a way of actually showing well this is how a print looks and it is what yeah what it is is what you see i mean jean jean then paul's auntie jean got one she texted me and said look what i've got i was like oh wow she's absolutely thrilled with it she's absolutely oh, thrilled with it yeah 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 so but the thing is I, at the moment i'm losing money <laughs> Because I'm doing Facebook ads, and um, it's actually Facebook ads are not that, they're not that straightforward to do. No. Um, so, and it's all a learning experience. And the problem with them is, well, first of all, you don't know what it is that if it's not selling, you don't know why it's not selling. Is it yeah. that you're not very good at doing the ads? Is it that your sales page selling it is not very good? 
is it that your art doesn't appeal to people or not the people you're targeting at it's so many things involved and supposedly the facebook algorithm learns over time well that's all very well (laughs) but over time you're putting money in them if you know what i mean yeah so how how long are you going to be doing this freebie thing for i don't know because i'm only wondering i'm wondering if it'll still be going on when this comes out because if you uh, are, yes, if yes you, sh- okay. Well, let's yeah, because we're coming out on Monday, isn't it? This one. Okay, so just for everyone listening, if yeah. you want a free print from Tara, <laughs> where can they go to find? If you've got to be in the UK, right. at the moment I'm only doing it UK. But mm-hmm. it, if it's successful, I don't think about doing a US one. So they can go to www dot, and I think you have to put that in because it doesn't seem to always work without that. Uh, Tara Roskell Prince, which is my last name is R O S K E L L Prince dot com. Yeah, and you can you can find them there. There's a choice of three prints if you want one. And by the way, um, you can buy one from me for about four hundred to six hundred pounds. <laughs> <laughs> That's an original, though, isn't it? <laughs> I'm kidding. Carry on. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, what else I've been doing is I I've created one pack painting since we last spoke it's funny because i yesterday i was gonna i'm gonna do some painting and then i start fiddling with my ads i get a little bit obsessed with them and it's funny because i was talking online to another woman and she was saying exactly the same thing she gets so engrossed in the ad she doesn't paint um so yeah i've been using the graffiti star markers again but i'm feeling like i need to do a bit more of the ink ones right. do you ever do something well perhaps you don't actually but you feel like maybe you're pulling too far away from what you liked about what you're doing. Um, Not too far away, but almost like I need to rein back. I need to do... So so I like the wild graffiti kind of looking ones. Yeah. But I feel now I need to also do some of the ink ones because I know I really like those as well. It's finding that balance, isn't it? Yeah. So I want to have... Yeah, I want to... It's almost like having your two sides when you do your dark painting and your light paintings. Yeah. So I want to do the graffiti ones, but I also want to pull back and do the more single colory type ones, mm. like the prints, similar to the prints. Mm. I had one more thing I've got to tell you. What was it? Oh, I have no idea. Yeah, so that's it, basically. Yeah. So maybe we should chat about resistance. or Yeah, or distraction, because basically I was just going to say is your ad... Um, a way of resisting the painting or just distracting you from it <laughs> no it's not resisting although it, well it is one of those types of things isn't it sort of I, I guess we should explain yeah what do we mean by art resistance because i think some people are going to think oh this is the same as an art block and to me it's not the same as an no. art block it's more of a temporary thing it's more the procrastination side yes exactly that and I, I, th- I think, and we go back to this so many times in so many episodes where we've mentioned that it is way harder to actually start a project than it is to finish it, I think. It's, it's getting to that, oh, totally. isn't it? You know, you, you've got it in your head, oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And do you know, my husband, he always says there's doers in life and there's going to doers. And I've always said he's a already done it as <laughs> because he's one of these people that, you know, as soon as he makes a decision, that's it, he's doing it. Um, I'm more of like, yeah, I'll do that, but it needs to be the right time, you know, so I'm a bit like the other way. Yeah. But when it comes to art, you can't sort of be like that. You have to really fight that. And I think it can be caused by different things. Perhaps it, it it's just you're distracted, if you know what I mean. Or yeah. it might be that you are not distracted and you want to do it, but you're, you're scared of starting for some reason, scared of failing, something like that. So I think one of the key things is to actually work out if you are finding it um, hard to get to it, why? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I, I've put down a lot of different reasons for art resistance, a few ideas. And one of them, I think, is one that you basically just talked about which is why you switched to acrylics. Yeah. You had that barrier to starting. It's not just that that wasn't just a fear of starting. That was more of a practical practicality. Yeah. So when you paint with oils, you've got all the hassle of setting up, clearing up, 
and that takes the amount of time but with acrylics you could go in and paint but the amount of time you you spend going and paint would be the time of set up and clear up yeah so so that's one but yeah fear is a really weird one isn't it because i i know i definitely get i don't know about you but i definitely get the fear thing of starting absolutely fine once i've made my first few marks no problem but fear I feel like expectation. Yeah, and and at the end of the day, we have to kind of get things into perspective, don't we? I mean, what is the worst that can happen? You you cock it all up, and it's the worst drawing you've ever done. Do you know what I mean? So what? Yeah. <laughs> but it, it it I say so what? But I think we all know what it really feels like when that happens. It can knock your confidence. So it can have it can have a real big effect when you do, you know go wrong but I think it just depends on how you um how you look at going wrong and what it is and going wrong to me isn't necessarily that you know good it's more that oh I needed to do that now I know I I can't do it that way anymore I've got to try a different way so it's like a lesson so that's it's just switching that thought process into um oh I've learned a new lesson brilliant let's move on rather than, oh, my God, I'm no good, I've, I can't do this. Depends how you look at it. Yeah, I think it also depends if you have a plan. Yeah, that's not, that, which isn't necessarily the right way of putting it. Like, Say, for example, you know you want to paint those donuts. In your head, before you start, you probably have an idea of what you want those donuts to look like. Yes. So you've obviously got a reference and you in your head you're thinking, oh, I know I'm going to, oh, I think I might do this like this. So in your head you've worked out what the outcome should be. So you're scared to start because the outcome may not match the idea in your head. And I have a similar thing because although mine aren't planned, if I find a face, like a, just a normal photographic face reference or I make one with AI, and I love the face... I then feel like I let the face down almost. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm so excited about drawing that thing, even though I don't know what it will look like in the end, I feel like it should be good. Yeah. And so I'm always scared to start in case it doesn't end up. Even And even like you say, because it doesn't matter, because I could just start again, but I almost feel like I've started that, so I've tried that face, so that face gets pushed aside now, even though I loved that face. That's weird, isn't it? Do you ever do you ever go back to them at a later date when that happens? Go back to the same painting? No, the same face. If you've used yes, it sometimes and, yeah. I do. Sometimes I do revisit a face. Yeah, quite often though, it won't work. If I've tried it once, quite often it won't work anyway. Mm. Although obviously I did that fifty faces using the same guy, so I did revisit that one quite a lot. I think as well <clears throat> when it comes to resistance. Um, there are so, there's so many reasons why it happens. Like, for instance, you could be one of these people who want to do the art and want to be the artist so desperately, and what you're doing is you're watching loads of YouTube channels, reading loads of art books, you know, getting all the stuff, buying all the stuff, feeling like that's the creative, a massive part of the creative process, when actually it's not. It's not at all. None of that makes you an artist. Only making art makes you an artist. It doesn't matter how many YouTube channels you watch. Just because you think, oh, I, yeah, I reckon I, I've got that. I, I can do that. You, unless you've tried it, you, don't, you can't do it. Do you know what I mean? You've got to actually yeah. do it. So I think there's that resistance as a beginner artist where you sort of got all the gear and no idea, if you know what I mean, but you're you're so busy trying to get all the information you need so that you feel like you're in a place where you're ready. But actually, the only real thing that's going to turn you into a good artist is getting actual practice Um, and no amount of reading books and everything. Well, yeah, it will help you, but you need to be doing it all, (laughs) not just, you know, not just sort of watching everyone else do it. You've got to be doing it. So that's a, I think that's a beginner yeah. um, side of resistance, do you think? Yeah, and I also think, especially 
Well, I think this is any time. If you get a negative comment, yeah. it doesn't even have to be bad, bad negative comment. But I think that also can make you resist wanting to create more. Because they always say, don't they, our human brains are programmed to notice the one bad comment as opposed to the hundred good ones. Aren't they just? And so I guess, I guess we just mm-hmm. have to think... That when we get that negative comment, okay, is that negative comment really something, does it matter to us? Is it something that, okay, yes, I get that. They do have a point. Can I correct that or make that better in the next piece? Or is it, I don't care who this stranger is who's saying this really quite rude thing, you know, when Mm. I'm doing my best and putting myself out there. And should I just ignore this person? Because... I don't know about you, but if there's a if in real life, you know, there's someone you know and you think they're a bit of an ass, yeah, then I don't really care what they say because no. you because don't want to waste your time. I don't on like them like anyway, no, do you know what exactly, I mean? But no. but we don't kind of think of it like that online, which which we should, mm. which is kind of odd. I think also mood, your mood. You know how um, you was you had a sort of bad year, yeah, sort of. And, but I don't mean you necessarily have to have a bad year, but say you just have a bit of a crappy few weeks or something, that can also make give you a bit of resistance, can't it? Because Absolutely, yeah. Because you start off in such a wrong frame of mind to paint. It's yeah. probably not going to go well, is it? No, definitely not. Definitely not. You know, and I think um, for me, when I feel reluctant to paint because maybe... For whatever reason, it could be a number of reasons, but if I feel any kind of resistance, quite often what I'll do, I don't know if you you do this. I Actually, I, I don't think you'll do this, Tara. Cause you're like, <laughs> you don't like candles. No, 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 no. No, no but what I'm saying is I will find any, any kind of household chores that need doing first, which is why I said you'd never do that because yeah, no, Kevin does all that. No. <laughs> so... If, I'll, I'll think right yeah I, I'm definitely going to paint today yeah oh but um actually no the bedding needs changing today so I'll do that first and oh I, actually yeah the kitchen um let me just unload the dishwasher and oh I better just just check my um emails first as well just in case blah 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 and I suppose that's another thing where you have to ask yourself why you're doing all these things that you could be doing after you've done your painting it's almost like well the painting takes the lowest priority in your life um actually what prioritizes over art is making sure my my um kitchen sink is clear you know yeah and it's surprising how often I find myself doing that and I don't always know why but I think in the past as well another thing that um can make you feel a level of resistance is if you are feeling pressured to produce art for whatever reason, and this might be because you've just opened a, I don't know, an Instagram account for your art or um, a Facebook page or a TikTok account or whatever, social media account specifically for your art. And for some reason you have it into your head that you have to post something every single day which, yeah, okay, they do say that you should. But ultimately, that can actually be quite um, stifling in a way. It can almost make you like a rabbit in a headlights. And I had, I remember going through this myself when it was with Instagram. I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm supposed to post something every day. And, oh, well, perhaps today then, because I haven't um, done anything that's made my painting look particularly different. I'll post a picture of my dirty paintbrushes, blah, blah, blah. And then you feel that kind of pressure that you're not doing it for you anymore. You're doing it to entertain other people or to make sure that your social media account is active all the time. Now, what's really funny about that is I used to be quite aware of this and the pressure of feeling like I had to post something every day was making me feel like I was pressured to paint and then it starts feeling a bit more like a job instead of something you really enjoy doing but what's really interesting about this is that (laughs) when I was you know I had obviously I had that art block and I was off of Instagram for I say off of Instagram I was still on Instagram but I didn't 
do anything on it for what was probably about four months, do you think? Something like that? I don't know. I don't know. Well, I bet I wouldn't mind betting it was about that. And I've only just started posting on it again, and I'm talking, I'm not posting every day or anything like that, just once uh, or twice in the last sort of, I don't know, week or so. Um, But what I found really interesting was during that time that I was off of Instagram, I gained about 300 followers. (laughs) Really? (laughs) Yeah. Whereas, you know, when I was on it, it was like people... You know, the going the followers weren't going sort of very well. Just didn't really change. But suddenly, when I wasn't, that says, just don't bother. (laughs) Just people prefer it when you're not there. Yeah, (laughs) probably. (laughs) So, but there, there there is. I have heard, I have heard something actually where they, someone was saying the other day that if you don't go on Instagram for a little bit, I don't know about four months. No, no. But when you do start posting again, they will give it a bit extra push. Because they're trying to encourage you. Yeah, I wonder how true that is. Yeah, I don't know. Interesting. Yeah, but it, you know, that's going back to what I was saying about it feeling like a job or a chore. That's when you, you know alarm bells need to start ringing, and that's when you probably need to think, I need to mix things up a bit. Okay, instead of you know feeling like I have to paint now because I've got my stuff into a gallery and I've got to do this and I've got to do that. Um. I need to get back that feeling of I want to do this and I want to do that. Because that's where you started. Everyone who's an artist started off wanting and desperately wanting to paint and loving it. But then there always comes a point where you you feel like you don't want to do it for some reason. You, you're you just tired or you're just not feeling it. That's normal. But it's when it gets to the point where you're feeling that more than the other and it's like, oh, I've got to do this. Oh, I better do this because I've got a post on Instagram today or my gallery wants me to have another painting up by blah 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 or I've got a um exhibition coming up that's when I think it can get a bit like you can start feeling like it's a job and then when it starts feeling like a job it's it can be less enjoyable and you're less likely to go into your art space and start because you, you know generally speaking you were always doing it for fun in the beginning so that's when I still feel like you want to mix it up a bit. In my case, I thought, oh, I'm going to try acrylics. And, you know, I know for, for, for you, that's not exactly going wild. But for me, no. you know, from going to um, realism painting in oils from start to finish to cartoon looking um, paintings and then refining in oils, that is me playing, you know, and I'm really enjoying that, that side of that. But also, you could do well, something... Well, you, you always said you hated them, didn't you? You used to say, I hate acrylics. I hated acrylics because I hated the fact you couldn't blend them very well. And, I mean, you know, yeah. even now, I'm like, oh, my God, I still don't like them for that. But that's not why I'm using them now, you know. So I'm trying it in a different way. I'm doing it. I don't care about the brush strokes and I'm not worried about the blending. I can work over the top with oils and re- achieve that. So I'm quite enjoying that feeling of being a bit looser being able to just think okay that's fine I'll I'll correct that later that's great whereas with oils if you do that you're like oh god it's gonna be ages before I can correct that because it's gonna I'm gonna take a week to dry you know to dry enough to work over it nutty yeah well yeah you know I'm very very much now um with the thought that I I am gonna carry on working like this for sure oh that's good which is great. But yeah. otherwise, you could do things like maybe if you're feeling it's a bit like a, a chore to go in your art room, then try something else. Try, do some sketching. Try some um, poetry or writing. Because if we're, we're creative people, so it doesn't stop at art. So even, even in that four months when I wasn't painting um, or I was just doing a bit of sketching here and there, I was making TikTok videos and that was my way of, um, it was like a creative outlet for me. Do you know what I mean? It was still something creative. Yeah. Um, and now I'm sort of, my sketchbook's pulling me back again, which is very, I'm so pleased about. I'm starting to feel that normal, like, ooh, and I want to um, I want to look at art. I want to see people posting art on Instagram and I want to, you know, I want to, but I want to, I want to do it because I had that break now and I, th- I feel sort of over that side of my art block. 
but the resistance is still was still there for sure of starting with donut painting because there was that oh no I've I've had this break what if I've forgotten how to paint <laughs> even though I've been doing it now for years what if just a few weeks off has made me forget how to do it it's crazy isn't it yeah and also because if you have a bad painting because I, I know you did one painting which you weren't as happy as the others yeah didn't you a mm. little while ago yeah I mean, and that is, that's a sure thing to to make you have a bit of resistance, isn't it? Because then you're worried that's going to, that's it now. That is, every painting is not going to go my way once you have one like that. I think that really stops you. But but the, 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 I think one of the problems is that we treat each piece we paint like it should be a masterpiece, don't we? Yes. Instead of treating each piece like it's an experiment. Or yeah. a step, stepping stone. Yeah. And, and it is crazy, isn't it? Because you can imagine, like, years ago, when you got, like, people, artists painting, you can imagine half, half of the paintings they did probably went in the bin or, or scra- got scraped off properly and repainted over. Yeah. But now, because we feel like we need to show up and show it online, we feel like every painting we should do should be, like, a winner. Yeah, show a you know worthy I mean? of showing people on social media. Yes, yeah. It's, that's, that is, I think, one of the things you had. Every painting has to be worthy. And I think we've just got to start stepping back and saying, this is an experiment. And really, if, if you thought about it honestly, I know you get better the more and more you do it, but if you painted 10 paintings, and obviously very different for me and you because I, I paint much quicker, but... Out of those 10 paintings, I would imagine that there'll be two I like. Doesn't mean the other eight are terrible. And it doesn't mean that other people won't prefer the other eight. But there'll be two there that I like. Yeah. Don't don't you think the same? Mm. Yeah, there's definitely paintings I'm like, oh, I, I really don't want to part with it. And there's other ones where I'm like, oh, well, you know. I mean, I always part with all my paintings. I, I sell them all. But there's, there's ones I, I am happier with than others for sure but then i guarantee that the ones i'm happier with um somebody else will be happier with the ones that i'm less yeah, happy with exactly. so it, it's all just it, it you can't listen to yourself you can't be your own judge with your art because i know that when the gallery came around to pick up my artwork there was the ones they were um ooing and ahhing about i was like oh okay i thought you'd like this one and the ones i the one i thought they'd go wow yeah they were like yeah yeah, that's nice. It's you know what I mean? So it's so surprising, and that's a gallery. Yeah. So you never really know. It's, it's it's such a subjective thing, isn't it? Everyone likes something different. So what you yeah, feel but we like, do ha- cool. we do have in a head though, don't we? When we start the painting, mm, yeah. that it has to be this perfect piece. I feel social media has got a lot to answer for because I do. Yeah, I think so. I, too. I do feel like it's um, it's made us feel pressured to produce and we've got to share at every stage and oh my gosh this stage has gone a bit wrong I don't really want to share that um blah 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 blah. so I'm I'm sort of taking a bit of a different attitude to social media now in that while you know I I'm not I don't feel the need to share every single stage of my donut I've literally shared nothing apart from the finishing the mid layers you know and I'm like well it's literally because I need a break from that pressure I just need to get on with it, really, and not worry about, oh, actually, I better set the camera up. Because sometimes, I just think, well, I used to think this. I used to think when I was doing my realism paintings that um, trying to set up a little video or a photo shoot of what I was doing would often take as long <laughs> as it would the actual yeah. time I had to paint. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so I know what you mean. I'd be like, God, if I hadn't have had to worry about all of that, I could have got an extra half an hour in or an hour. So... Yeah, I think, I think we have to be... This is almost weird to say, but we've almost got to be entertainers yeah. as well as, as artists, haven't we? Yeah. Entertainers in, in, in the sense of... If, if we want to build up a social media following, then we've got to try and grab people's attention. So we can't just be painting the paintings we want to do. We have to try and think of novel ways of showing yeah. the painting. Mm. And it, it's all right sometimes, isn't it? Because you can think of these ideas of, of doing it, but sometimes you just want to paint. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think another yeah. reason you can be uh, resistant to going into your art space is when you know you're going to try something new and you've planned to try something new. And because you've tried, you're trying something new, you're scared of that be- being a beginner again because yeah. you're not used to doing that. And to some extent, I've been a bit like that recently with my sketchbook. Like, oh, God, I haven't done it for ages. And, oh, no, you know, um, I'm not so resistant to it now because I'm actually sort of thinking, oh, I know, I want to I wanna go in with the loosest, most flexible nib pen I've got and I don't care if I oh make blocks God. and all this. I know, it's quite, it's quite a fun feeling like this, actually. I'm actually looking forward to that. I'm not resisting it. Um, but it can be, if you are precious about things, like I was very precious about my paintings and I think you can be too precious. And I think one thing that that break has taught me is actually, you know, I've managed four months without this. Um, I don't want to go any longer without this, but it certainly made me think, actually, it's not the be all and end all of everything. If, if I paint something and it goes wrong, oh, well. I'll try it. I'll do another one. Or if I sketch something that goes wrong, does it really matter? Not really. I just want to do it for the fun of it, you know? Yeah. I have some ideas, and I don't know if you do, about getting over art resistance. I know we've sort of worked some into what we said, but we, do you want to try? Yeah, I mean, some of them out? I think it depends, though, what the what, what the what the reason for the resistance in the first place, doesn't it? Whether yeah, it's, it does. Yeah. But I think there are some things like for me, and I I don't know if you agree with this, but one of the resistance thing is is the fact that before you start, like if I haven't got a face I want to draw, it can take me, blooming, I don't know, two hours or something ridiculous, not two hours, but you know what I mean, an hour, half an hour to find a face I like. So I always think that if you can prepare in advance, whether that's preparing your reference material, whether it's getting your space ready, like if you haven't got a permanent space, getting the space ready the night before, anything like that I think can help overcome resistance because it means you can start straight away without faffing like I do. I think that's a great um, reason to have a an area in your house, even if it's just the corner of a room somewhere where you've got like a little trolley of your own to, to set up your stuff or a little area on your kitchen table even, you know, just somewhere where you can just leave your stuff out if you want to um, and just pick it up when you want to. It's more difficult when you're doing oils and things like that, but certainly, I mean, then I, I think I've got a studio for that, so that's great. But when it comes to things like... Um, just having something there ready and that's that's where a sketchbook's so good isn't it you can sit, yeah that's sit easy, with it on isn't your it? knee and just do it you know and i also think what you were saying before about how you were now prepared to just go and spend 10 minutes on your art i think that's one thing that can really help you get over resistance if you just say to yourself i'm going to commit 10 minutes to my art because it then doesn't become this huge feat that you've got to perform if you know what I mean so that 10 minutes it could just be I don't know just laying some color down painting some backgrounds I think anything that just gets you it's a starting like you said about the starting problem anything gets over the hurdle of starting I think is is a winner yeah definitely and maybe we've spoken about this before when it came to time management I mean I think scheduling a time at least to say, actually, I'm going to make sure that I'm going in there and I'm, I'm not going to let myself not go in there. I'm going to do it. At 12 o'clock on Monday afternoon or whatever time it is, that you you know, I'm going to go in my art room, I'm going to switch my phone off, I'm just going to get on with it. It's making those, it's just, it's just because, uh, like I said before, I mean, I went into the art room yesterday thinking I was going to do probably 10 minutes because of my elbow but also because I'm trying to break myself in gently at the moment and not think oh I need to be in there for at least four hours <laughs> do you know what I mean and yeah. actually um I did not want to put my brushes down the only reason I did is because I actually thought actually I, I'm done with these acrylics now I need to the next layer is going to probably be oils so I'm not going to start the oils right now I'll do that next time because I didn't have time to do much more than that but you know I didn't want to stop so that's really good but because starting was the issue starting's the issue isn't it it? absolutely it's i I would say eight out of ten times it is always starting that is the problem and once you start it's very 
you're very unlikely to stop when you think you're going to stop. Even if you say to yourself, right, I'm only going to do 10 minutes. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to do 10 minutes. I'm going to do 10 minutes of sketching. It's very hard to stop once you've started. And you, then you think, oh, I'm so yeah. glad. Do you know what else helps as well? Is that um, one thing I noticed when I, when I used to paint, I used to listen to a lot of podcasts. And if I wasn't listening to a podcast, I listened to some music. And it's very rare these days that you just sit down and you listen to music and you listen to a song all the way through and then it goes to the next song and you don't know what the song's going to be and you listen to it all the way through um it's rare isn't it because you're flick forward in the car oh yeah flick forward that one flick forward that one or you don't or you've got the tv on or something like that and because i hadn't done artwork for quite a long time i realized that i hadn't listened to music for ages because I just hadn't and um and so what i and i hadn't also listened to a podcast for ages so um, I thought, oh, I know what I'm going to do. I just put my, my painting playlist on. I haven't listened to that for ages. And just having that on, it was so relaxing. It's like, oh. Or um, if you, you might have a podcast that you listen to. Funny enough, I always find that as well. If it's a good podcast and it's a good topic and you're invested in what they're talking about, that can keep you doing something for longer than you might have done otherwise. So... If you were to go into the art room or in your art space and just draw for the sake of drawing, that's great. But sometimes just that extra thing that keeps you there can be um, a good a good idea as well. Just putting some really nice music on that you really like or listening to that podcast that you really like. It just keep you going for a bit longer. You know? it's, it's funny because I always used to either listen to music or listen to a podcast when I was drawing and painting, mm. I don't listen to anything now. Why? I don't know. It's just I much prefer silence. I now. like silence, um, but I don't like it when I'm painting. And I think there's a reason for that. I find if I paint or draw or sketch in silence, I'm so invested in what I'm doing that I overdo it, like I'll overwork or I'll think too much about it. So what happens is if I listen to a podcast in the background or some music, mainly a podcast where this is concerned, actually, I find that my brain is distracted enough by something else that I'm not putting too much into the sketch. Um, and I'm, I actually feel like I'm looser. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Strange, yeah, isn't it? Do you know, I might have an experiment. Mm. Um, because I haven't done it for ages where I've either listened to something. So I'm, what I might try is try listening to a podcast while I'm painting, Try then try listening, to, you know, at separate times, then music and then silence. Because I'm trying to think, I've got some paintings on that poster on, on my wall and I really, really like some of those paintings. Mm. So, and I've looked at some of my newer stuff and my, my, my graffiti stuff is all over the place yeah in a, in a way I like you know yeah. it's very very loose but sometimes when I do the ink drawings they're tighter now than mm. when I did those ah. so I wonder if that would make a difference well there is something in it I have heard this before yeah. that if you are in silence you're just focused and sometimes I think with art the result can be slightly better if you're less slightly if less distracted. focused yeah because you're not overthinking things and certainly it's better for me if I sketched in silence I don't think it would work for me it's not that I don't enjoy the sketching process it's just that I need a bit of distraction funny enough it wouldn't work if I had the tv on because I want to be looking at what I'm doing um but even yeah, see, things I would like sketch a, with the tv on would you yeah no I'm too yeah. dis- I'm too distracted then I'm not sure which one to look at <laughs> um yeah no I, I think that's a, a good yeah, something that will keep you in there once you're in there. That's a good, you know. Yeah. What you want to be doing is you want to be resisting leaving the art space, not going into it. That's the, that's the secret. But honestly, the thing to yeah, do... Yeah, but, but I think once you start, yeah. I think you're okay. I think you need a fast-forward button. You need to... When you're sort of thinking, oh, you know, just let me just, let me just load the dishwasher or I'll just do this or I'm scared of um, going there because of this... Press a far, fast forward button in your head and imagine 
in two hours' time what you'll be more pleased with, your lovely clean kitchen or the fact that you've got... Um, you've filled a few pages of your sketchbook because the clean kitchen Depends can what the come sketches later. look like, doesn't it? Well, you know, Depends but like sketches. I say, if they're I just... Know. Yeah, they're just, you know... that. It's just all part of it, isn't it? It's, it's um, every sketch makes you a better sketcher at the end of the day. So yeah, I mean, I know I mean, here, here we are giving our tips, and I know I still have major resistance sometimes. Oh God, I yeah, do, I do try, but but like I've been, Kevin's come down before, and it'll be like twelve o'clock, and it goes, and I'll have all my painting clothes on, so I've got jeans on that covered in paint, and he goes, "Oh, you're painting today?" I go, "Yeah." I was going to. <laughs> and I'll have got distracted by something else. I'll be geeking on the computer or something like that. It, it, it's yeah. terrible. Computers are, computers and phones are such a big time suck. Yeah, and, and it's the worst thing you can do. If you're planning to do any painting or sketching, it's the absolute worst thing you can do is switching on your phone or looking at your phone. I think yeah, the thing to do is. is go, right, okay, I'm going to do this first. And then I've got all the time in the world after that to fanny it about with social media or whatever else it is, emails, or I don't need to be doing it first. That's a Yeah, massive... that's a reward almost, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so you could make it a reward. It's, it's too much of a distraction. And I've done that before where I've, got, I've, I've had four hours set aside for painting and two hours of them I've just wasted on, you know setting up stuff for social media or just looking through it you know just just because you get an email and it'll say oh you know have you seen this it's oh no i haven't and then you'll go and have a look and oh actually i might buy one of those or do you know what i mean it's yeah i mean i was really bad the other day this wasn't a distraction from painting but basically i went on i was doing something to uh, oh yeah i was looking for the question answers we'll get to in a bit yeah uh, for our podcast and so I go onto our Instagram, but I don't even get to looking at the questions because when I get to Instagram, first oh. of all, it's my account that comes up first, and then I see somebody's commented on the thing. So I go and answer the comment, and then I look at somebody else's make a comment on theirs, and then I come out of it, and I go, well, I think, what was I doing? <laughs> <laughs> but then I have to go back into Instagram. Do you know what I mean? I haven't even looked at our account. It's so true, isn't so it? It just shows how bad it is. Yeah. Well, they're designed to Terrible. be addictive. They are actually designed yes. for that purpose. Yes. They're not stupid, yeah. these people on social media. They want you in there. You yeah. Know? So they, they'll do anything they can to keep you there. So the problem it, is, sketchbooks, I think, are designed to be addictive as well. But it's addictive to buying them rather than yeah. <laughs> actually working in them. I need to work more with my um, my my nib pen dip pen and ink because i really enjoyed that but i did very little of it um but i spent a lot of time buying nibs <laughs> and i did you yeah. very little time trying them out and i've just got this yeah. little um this little pot of nibs and yeah I, it's great because just recently after this whole art block thing and if anyone i keep referring to this if anyone wants to know about this art block there's a um one called can't remember and there's another one called coming out of art block Sorry, uh, one called <laughs> art block that's really helpful <laughs> one one called art blocks or something like that it was something about the problem with being an artist or oh the that, good being an artist the good the bad and the ugly that's it <clears throat> that's yeah. the first one to listen to and then it will explain everything we're talking about and why i had this break and then the last one we did was um coming out of an art block and I can't even remember why I've said that now because I've just got distracted. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, just because I just keep referring back to it. So it's just worth going back and having a little listen to, you know, what this what we're talking about. I think there was a point to where I was yeah. going with this, but I've lost it. It's gone. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> Never mind. You'll, you'll hear it when you're editing it. I'll be going, oh, that's what I meant. <laughs> that's yeah. what I was going to say. Never mind. You can put a voiceover on it. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, have we, have we got, I think we've... Have we got any more to cover or I don't we think so. I, I just get no. your bum in there. I, yeah. like, I know what I was going to say. I know what I was going to say. Yeah. After yeah. my art block, um, i have now getting to that point where we're talking about social media and all this, but it's lovely to feel that, um, point, that pull now where I'm like, oh, I'm so excited to try a nib pen and I'm so excited to do this and to do that because I hadn't felt like that for so long and I never thought I would ever again. So it's great to sort of start 
recognising the person that I the, was where I couldn't imagine life without art in it because I has I was yeah. getting to that stage where I was like, yeah, no, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> and now I'm like, what was I thinking? How could I ever think that yeah. I, could, I could not, this, you know, could be something I wouldn't be doing. So it's lovely to sort of recognise that feeling again. That's kind of like me, isn't it? But over a period of 20 odd years, yeah, you know, with the old working in, way. yeah, well, working in design and then not one, not thinking I'd ever draw again. So it's kind of odd, yeah, because you couldn't imagine art in your life for a while, could you? And then so now you can't no, imagine I couldn't, no. your life with it. So, yeah, no, it, it can be, you know, if you're feeling like that and you're feeling there's so many reasons it can be. Um, so yeah that's why I think it's a good idea to go listen back to those episodes um, because maybe it'll help you get to the bottom of it but I think now we should read out the answer to our last question do you yeah and we got tons of answers so I've had to only put a few so I do apologize if I missed yours but the question was would you rather own a painting that you love with a small price tag by an unknown artist or a painting that you dislike with a big price tag by a well-known artist there is one rule you are not allowed to sell it did you ever um, think of an answer yourself for this? Because you didn't. I think I already told you. But well, I mean, you, there's not really a choice, is there here? Because if there's no way of selling it, you may as well have the one you like. Exactly. Yeah. I my answer. Yeah. You see, I've got there's some paintings I have in my house, some original paintings um, that, in fact, I've got two that I absolutely treasure. And I would not swap for any, um, you know, Mona Lisa on my wall or whatever. I just wouldn't. And they are paintings by Tracy Fletcher King. Um, I would. I absolutely yeah. treasure those. And obviously, she she passed away. Um, and I I loved them before. I mean, I I got the paintings well before she became ill. And I treasure them even more now. And they'll be on my walls forever. So. Yeah, I, I would never, I would never swap those paintings for any uh, masterpiece. Even if I could, well, if I could sell it for a million pounds, maybe because it would be life changing, and she'd be go, she'd be up there going, "What are you doing?" She chose to go for it. Yeah, <laughs> for God's sake. But um, no. Did, did you swap work, or did you buy? Did you buy her work? Well, funny enough, I bought. What well, is really funny because I absolutely adored her perfume bottles. I, I adored all of. I still do. I love Tracy Fletcher King's work she's just and such a lovely person and um i we became friends um online and talked a lot emailed back and forth a lot um and she did these perfume bottles bottles i always knew i'd want to buy one of her paintings and funny enough i bought a perfume bottle and she said what she said was this is so weird she said because um, you've just perf- purchased this perfume bottle. And she said, I've actually already sent you one. It's due to be delivered any day. And, really? and it's funny enough that I think it was either the day, the d- I mean, it would have taken a couple of weeks to come from um, Australia. Yeah. But um, it was literally the following day after I'd already bought it that I got this other painting that she'd sent me for free. And, and I, she said, oh, really? do you, she said, oh, no, you know, don't have to, you don't have to buy this. I've sent you one. I was like, no, I still want to buy this one. I love it. So I've got two. One she gave me and one I bought. Um, and she also sent me another little, um, a little sort of sketch of a couple of pairs, a little, little one. And I love that as well. I absolutely adore it. So, Yeah. I absolutely loved yeah. her stuff. No, I didn't know if you'd done a swap or something. No, yeah. well, I painted things for her. Yeah. I did things for her as well, and I'd send her little things. I I did a yeah. few sketches and things. I mean, my artwork at that time was it was on, she she was on a different level in the, the way she worked. She was very loose and sketchy, and I just loved her stuff. I absolutely loved yeah. her stuff. But yeah, I painted her dog. Sent her a little painting of her dog and bits and pieces. So, but yeah, I treasure those. So it's an interesting, isn't it? I mean, she had a. Um, a huge following, actually. Um, she certainly wasn't a famous artist or anything like that, but um, they're absolutely priceless to me, especially now, you yeah. know. So anyway, the answer... Well, we had a lot of answers, as you said. The answer, um, the answer to this question. Travis Ryan, he says, option A, I already have several that I treasure. I've got Carla Hawke, and she says, art is emotional and personal. Option A, I definitely go with a piece of art that speaks to me. 
Joe Brown, my walls are full of pieces made by artists I've met and admired, mostly amateurs. They mean a lot to me, both visually and because of their happy associations. I wouldn't swap them for anything, except possibly a Modigliani. <laughs> <laughs> but it'd have to be one she didn't like. Yeah, that's so the thing. Kind of defeats yeah. the object. Exactly. <laughs> I've got Florence Wright. For sure, something I love, even if it's inexpensive and by an unknown. If I can sell the high price one, Oh, if I can't sell the high price one, so I can get other ones I love. So basically, she want, really wanted to sell the high price one so she can buy other art that she likes. <laughs> I've got Jack's Abstracts. Interesting answers here. I'm going to go the other way and pick the well-known artist piece that I don't even like. Oh, I love that he's just completely, you know. Yeah. I love that. Reason behind this choice is what a conversation piece it would be. Any visitors would be interested to see and give their comments on it. And great conversations could be had around the merit of why it's hanging on my wall when I don't even like it. Maybe some people would even manage to sway my opinion by pointing out beauty that I hadn't previously appreciated. I'd probably hang it in the loo for maximum effect. (laughs) Now, I, I have to say, I think that answer, it gets five stars from me. It's a brilliant answer because... Yeah, because it's... Brilliant. I love the I love his reasoning behind it. It's not about oh well, look I have yeah. this. It's about the fact that it's a conversation piece, and brilliant answer, fantastic. That's my favourite. Yeah. I've got C Boggs art. Easy answer. When I travel, I love to check out local venues, especially outdoor art shows. I enjoy talking to other artists and seeing what they're creating. I almost always go home with at least one piece of art from someone I've met. And I've got Andy W art. I would go with the expensive one. With my luck, I would probably get robbed or a house fire, so the insurance money would come in useful. (laughs) Brilliant. Very clever, Andy. Actually, with my luck, I would probably lose everything else and be left only with the ugly painting. Oh, well, at least I could give it away to someone who does like it. I love that answer as well. Yeah, I like that too. (laughs) Well, my paper's stuck together. Hang on. Uh, (laughs) Right, I've got... I don't know how you sell this. Say this. Kifalang... I would rather own and proudly display a work of art done by my three-year-old nephew than a Picasso piece. I truly love the people he draws with no bodies, just a head with a happy face and legs and arms coming out of it. I wish I could post a pic here, the one I am hanging up. I always used to draw people like that, which is a head with two lines as legs and two lines as arms. I think all kids do, And a big smiley face, yeah, yeah. No, um, good answer. Anyway, I've got Maggie Fitz. Unfortunately, I only own my own paintings as I am as cheap as mud or a starving artist. Um, LOL. But if I had any money, I would love to support other artists. Uh, do you, do you have any of your own paintings hanging up on your wall? Yeah, I, I never used to. But now in my office, yes, I have that poster of my art and then I also have a few other pieces and Kevin's got some of my art in his room not because I suggested it because he asked for it oh. but I never ever used to mm-hmm. no you have as well haven't you you've got one piece I've only that. got one uh, obviously you've my got art. a poster as well oh yeah that's in the art room though that's different I think yeah. um, well, that, that mine's in mine yeah but as in like for decorating your house sort of thing or, or putting on the walls of your house so I've got one um, and it's just a pomegranate i I painted a pomegranate and it just so happens it looks really good in my kitchen because my kitchen's got a lot of red in it. So I said, oh, that'll do, I'll have that. (laughs) Yeah. But um, a lot of people do say to me, why haven't you got any of your own art on your walls? I don't know, really. Because I wouldn't need to sell it. And really, that's the point. Yeah. So. And I I never used to want to. Maybe maybe it was because I didn't used to like it enough. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But now I actually do like it, so... Yeah. Anyway, I'm on to Robert Myers, and he says, I've got to say, I'm shallow to the core. I don't think you are, Rob. <laughs> I would own a well known artist piece with a hefty price tag that's still hanging just to show it off. Then I'll probably take it down when everyone has left and place it in one of those 70s three ducks <laughs> on a <the> wall. <laughs> that is another brilliant answer. I really yes, love those yes. answers. Brilliant. Um, Petal and Sunray. 
that's easy. I'd rather own a painting that I love. Imagine you go on holiday and you find a little independent cafe or gift shop and you see a piece of art that you love. It reminds you of a great time in the place you travelled to and the mood and the colours are just spot on for a specific room in your home. Of course I'd want to buy that. Even if I didn't know the artist, I'd feel a connection. They were here painting this view that I appreciate and now I can feel joy from that when I'm reminded of it each time I glance at that painting. Now, if I was a well-known artist and the painting was worth a lot, that doesn't really mean much to me. If I don't personally like the painting for myself to own, I might appreciate their skill. You walk through a gallery, you don't like all the art, expensive or not, famous or not. You can find art that you connect with and that you love anywhere. Yeah, that's very, very true. Right, I've got Backstar John Marie Ferguson. My own home, definitely something I love. For a professional space, though, I might go with something recognisable and relevant to that workspace in that way, even if I don't personally love it. So, that makes sense, Yeah, so it? there are some that are kind of like, oh, maybe this, maybe that. Yeah, yeah, interesting answers. Okay, so we have a brand new question for you, and that is, what's stopping you from getting to your creative project, and what are you going to do about it? So what's stopping you from getting to your creative project and what are you going to do about it? So there's two two ways I'm, I'm looking at this question. I want lots of people to, to answer, obviously, because we need answers. But at the same time, if we get lots of people <laughs> answering, then they're all so procrastinating. <laughs> so, yeah, it'll be very interesting how many comments we get, get here. Um, and also, I think this could also be... You know, okay, so maybe you paint most weeks or whatever, but there might also be this project in the back of your head, some art of your creative project that you've been thinking about maybe for months or years and you've never actually done it. So I want to know why you haven't done that one as well. That's a good idea. Yeah, let's open it out a bit then. Yeah. Yeah. And and have you got an answer to that? that in text. No. (laughs) (laughs) No. (laughs) I haven't really got a big project that I've always been planning to do for years. So, you know. No, me neither. As always, you can let us know your answers in the Facebook group, which if you haven't joined, I highly suggest you do. We'll put the question up there and also on the Facebook page and, of course, on Instagram, which is Kick in the Creatives. I hope that gave you the kick in the creatives you needed. Don't forget to pop over to our website at kickinthecreatives.com to find out how you can take part in some of our upcoming creative challenges. And of course, there you can also subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. And if you're enjoying the podcast, we'd be really grateful if you'd leave us a little review maybe, or even just a star rating if you don't have time. Um, And if you want to find either myself or Tara online, I'm on Instagram as sandra.busby and my website is Sandra Busby art.com. Tara, what about you? Where can people find you? You can find me on my website, which is tararoskellart.com, also on Instagram and Facebook as Tara Roskell Art. And if you want to check out those free prints, if you're in the UK, that is www.tararoskellprints.com. And also, don't forget to check out and subscribe to our Kick in the Creators newsletter. We put all the challenges there and the podcasts and just everything basically you can keep up with on there and also we've released a course which is all about how to create characters and cartoons for fun you can find a link to the course on our website or you can go to kitinthecreatives.com forward slash cartoon course to find out more and if you enjoy what we do and you want to help support us at Kick in the Creatives, you can now support us by buying us a coffee and you can find the link on our website. Um, a huge thank you to our latest supporters, Dee McKiernan. Thank you so much for keeping me informed, inspired and entertained in difficult times. Um, you're very welcome. Uh, Billy Shanera, thanks for all the podcasts and challenges. Uh, Lynn W63, I really enjoy Fantastic Fridays. God, that's such a popular challenge, that, isn't it? It is, yeah. Um, and Joanna Brown, of course. Thank you so much again and again and again, Joanna Brown. We really, really appreciate it. And if you can't help us um, with the costs of running Kick and the Creatives, there are other things you can do to help us. You can share the episodes with other creatives or you could write us a nice little review. All of the things like that, it all helps. So we really do appreciate any support you can you can give us. But that is it for this time and we'll see you next time see ya bye
Bye. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed the episode. And if you did, perhaps you'd like to share it and leave a review for us on iTunes.